I'm Jack Knoll, and this is my book, Great Expectations. So, I mean, it's not really my book because it's actually a really old book. It was written 150 years ago by Charles Dickens, and his version of Great Expectations is a really successful, really great book. It's a book I read at school, and I really liked it. So when, um, a while ago, I was trying to think of something to draw, I thought, why not go back to this book and see if there's some good characters in there to draw? And that's how I ended up with this. Um, so I think if you're trying to think of something to draw and you're looking for ideas, go to the bookshelf and put out a story which needs pictures. I think all books are better with pictures. And it might be a J.K. Rowling, it might be a Jamie Oliver, but pull it off the shelf, have a look inside, and pick out a bit and try drawing what you read about. It's a good way to start. Um, that's how I got going with this. Uh, let's see how it turned out. Let's read chapter one together. Chapter one. My father's family name being Pirip, and my Christian name being Philip, my infant tongue could make of both names nothing longer or more explicit than Pip, 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 Pip. pip. So I called myself Pip and came to be called Pip. I never saw my father or my mother, and never saw any likeness of either of them, for their days were long before the days of photographs. My first ideas regarding what they were like were unreasonably derived from their tombstones. The shape of the letters on my father's tombstone gave me an odd idea that he was a square, stout, dark man with curly black hair. Hello, son. From my mother's, I drew a childish conclusion that she was freckled and sickly. Hi, darling. And this is the bit where the story really gets going. It was a memorable, raw afternoon towards evening. This bleak place, overgrown with nettles, was the churchyard, where Philip Pirrip, later this parish, and also Georgiana, wife of the above, were dead and buried. The dark, flat wilderness beyond the churchyard, intersected with mounds and gates, with scattered cattle feeding on it, was the marshes. The low, leaden line beyond was the river, and that distant, Savage lair from which the wind was rushing was the sea. And the small bundle of shivers, growing afraid of it all and beginning to cry, was Pip. Me. Hold your noise, cried a terrible voice, as a fearful man started up from among the graves. Keep steady, little devil, or I'll cut your throat. A fearful man, all in grey, with a great iron on his leg. A man with no hat and with broken shoes and with an old rag tied round his head. A man who had been soaked in water and smothered in mud and lamed by stones and cut by flints and stung by nettles and torn by briars. Who limped and shivered and glared and growled. And whose teeth chattered in his head as he seized me by the chin. Tell us your name, said the man. Quick. Pip, sir. Once more, said the man, staring at me. Pip, sir. Show us where you live, said the man. I pointed to where our village lay a mile or more from the church. And the man, after looking at me for a moment, turned me upside down and emptied my pockets. There was nothing in them but a piece of bread, which he ate ravenously as he sat me on a tombstone. <laughs> Who do you live with? Suppose now I let you live, which I haven't made up my mind about. I live with my sister, sir, Mrs. Joe Gargery, wife of Joe Gargery, the blacksmith, sir. Blacksmith, eh? said he, and he looked down at his leg. Then he came closer, took me by both arms and tilted me back as far as he could hold me. Now looky here, he said. You know what a file is? Yes, sir. You know what Whittles is? Yes, sir. After each question, he tilted me over a little bit more. You get me a file. He tilted me again. You get me Whittles. He tilted me again. You bring them both to me. He tilted me again. Or oh, I'll have your heart and liver out. He tilted me again. I said I'd get in the file, and I'd get him what broken bits of food I could, and bring them to him early in the morning. Say, Lord, strike you dead if you don't said the man. I said so, and he put me down. He hugged his shuddering body in both his arms, as if to hold himself together, and limped towards the low church wall. 
As I saw him go, picking his way among the nettles and among the brambles, he looked as if he were avoiding the hands of dead people, stretching up cautiously out of the graves to get a twist upon his ankle and pull him in. But now I was frightened again and I ran home without stopping. I'm out of here. So that's chapter one. I hope you enjoyed it. There's plenty more chapters in this book. All of them are exciting as that, if not more. Um, thanks very much. See you. Bye.